we set up a perimeter and I was point. I led the, my battalion and we went in and we set this huge perimeter up and uh, I was set up behind, uh, in front of a, a, like a pagoda type statue area and we dug in uh, fighting holes and we started to take uh, incoming rounds from the NVA and that they were testing our lines. And uh, so we called in gunship support uh, from the 1st Air Cav. So 1st Air Cav said, smoke your lines. And what you do is usually throw a smoke grenade out there and uh, they can see where the perimeter is at. Of, and what happened was, <clears throat> instead of uh, them attacking the NVA, <clears throat> they attacked us, uh, the first day I kept, they came in with uh, Cobra gunships. And uh, we were in a firefight, and, and I looked up, and I seen these puffs of smoke. And you could actually see the rockets take off. And uh, I, said, I, I said, that can't be coming at me. And I just turned to get my right leg out of my fighting hole. And when I turned, the rocket actually glanced off my, my left hip, and uh, I, they fired three rockets at me, and all of a sudden there was these massive explosions around me, and I just went down, and uh, I put myself, I was smoking, and you know, a little bit on fire and stuff like that, and uh, I uh, tried to put myself out and try to get oriented to what was going on, so I was pissed off, so I went to grab my rifle, because now I'm mad at the, the gunship and I want to fire at the, the helicopter and uh, my, my rifle's bent like a horseshoe. And uh, I, I was a big Sylvan Air collector. I had all of these Sylvan Airs uh, that I was bringing back for my kid brother. And when that rocket hit me, it decimated all my, uh, what's his name, my Sylvan Air. So I, I guess that helped me in, in, in a great way because it took the focus off of uh, uh, me concentrating uh, on how bad a shape I was. So I looked down on my leg and my leg was bent like an L. It was just hanging by a small piece of meat. And I took my leg and I straightened my leg out and I tried to take my shoelace off and try to, you know, uh, to tie my leg back on, which was, was not gonna happen. And then all of a sudden I started yelling, medevac, medevac, and people started to come up to me. and. Uh, they put mesh wire on me and they try to hold my leg in position and stuff like that. And uh, so we, they, they were trying to get me out. Now we're in this massive firefight with an, an MVA division. <clears throat> All these helicopters are shot down. So uh, regimental commanders calling in for medevacs and none of the helicopters will come in. They said, we're not coming in. So the regimental commander said, if you don't come in, we'll shoot you down. So uh, you know, an old Marine 34, which they used in Korea, uh, this, the, I guess he had a tremendous amount of heart. He came in and uh, they threw me on the chopper and uh, I remember I was in Da Nang and I, I woke up for a short period of time and I looked down in and there was a guy taking a pair of scissors and he just snipped the remaining piece of flesh out of my leg and my leg went one way and I went the other way. And uh, then I was in the, the hospital system from that point on uh, after I was hit. We hit a sniper that killed the guy that was only three feet away from me. And the guy had just gotten a Dear John letter that day, and I knew that he wasn't going to make it. You know, uh, just his attitude and going out was very, very negative, and you can't be like that. You've got to think of, I'm going to make it through the day. You know, I'm going home. I want to make it. May 5th, 1970, uh, the 101st Airborne. Uh, invaded Cambodia out of our, our, our fire base or our home field. Uh, a few days later, uh, when I had four days left in my tour of duty, North Vietnamese sent troops across the border, captured a artillery base from the Arvin uh, soldiers, turned the cannons on our fire base. Uh, once they came over, heard the first one come over, I said to my company commander, that sounds like artillery. He said, you don't want too many John Wayne movies. When that round hit, it picked up a five-ton truck and threw about 30 feet in the air with flames. We had nowhere to hide. We had nothing that would stop a one five five howitzer round. So uh, for that five, 10 minutes that we were shelled, it was pretty scary. We had been searching an area of, uh, that was known to have Via Kong and hidden tunnels. And we had two dog teams. And we were working side by side about maybe 50, 50, 75 yards or feet away from each other, and we're leading patrol. And uh, the other dog team picked up an alert, and as the dog 
picked up alert, a Viet Cong jumped up and started running across a field. And uh, his shotgun bodyguard took out the Viet Cong. And out of nowhere, on my right flank, a woman jumped out of a bunker, and she started running towards us. And she had a, quite a big knife in her hand. And she's just yelling and screaming. Stormy moved out in front of me and hit her. And, and I shot her. And I just hit her in the arm. I mean, we had 45s. We were really never trained uh, at marksmanship with a 45. So I hit her in the arm. And she just, her momentum, she just kept coming. And then my shotgun came around and hit her with the rifle and knocked her out. Probably that was probably my scariest moment because it was so close and it was unexpected. And I just remember, you know, I thanked Stormy, but I was like totally shaken. I had to actually sit down after it happened. That was probably my really scariest moment. Uh, amidst some considerable heckling, I did it every day. I was get on my knees in the jungle and say a prayer to St. Joseph that my mother gave me before I left. And my recon sergeant professed to be an atheist. And so he was a tough guy. I think he had been on his third tour at that point. So there was no end to the barbs that would come my way from Sergeant Turner who was a good man. And uh, after that, we were on an operation. Uh, there had been a situation where uh, there thought there were sightings of American POWs. So I, I got my recon sergeant and my RTO, and I said, when the rest of these guys start crawling back out of here, you go with them, uh, and I'm going to stay. And my recon sergeant said, LT, we're going to stay right here and die with you. And I was pretty convinced this was going to be it. And I looked at my the date on my watch was November the 17th of 71. And I realized it was my mother's birthday. And I said, I can't believe I'm going to buy the farm on my mother's birthday. And with that, Sergeant Turner, the atheist, crawled over to me and he said, hey LT, do you have that prayer? <laughs>